Hello, lovely internet strangers. Welcome to the next video where I continue talking about Latinx. I know you're excited. Let's continue, shall we? John McWhorter, one of my favorite public intellectuals and linguistic expert, actually wrote an article in The Atlantic in 2019 about the term Latinx and why he thinks it won't catch on the way that a term like Latino caught on or in his community, the way the term African-American did catch on as an alternative to black. So here's where I'm going to attempt to explain the difference between Latino and Hispanic because this is relevant to the topic of the Spanish language. Because there was also a comment on the Latino Rebels article that said, if Latino is too masculine and Latina is too feminine with neither being gender inclusive enough, instead of creating a new word for them, why not just use the genderless word Hispanic instead? And I will tell you why you cannot do that. Because the term Hispanic is a colonial one. The term Hispanic comes from the fact that Hispania was the Latin word for the home of the Spaniards. So they colonized all these territories that then had their influence that mixed with the indigenous cultures. So it has colonial ties, which most of the people pushing for Latinx don't like anyway. But also the term Hispanic largely became used as a census term in the 80s to lump together demographically all the Latin American immigrants, but it connects them by linguistic heritage. So it includes people from Spain, but it excludes people from Brazil, for example, who speak Portuguese. So in 2000, the census started using the word Latino as the definitive word to describe all the people that live south of our border in Central America and South America. So Latino, or now Latinx, is about ethnicity and culture, and Hispanic is more about a linguistic division. So like I said, Brazilians would be Latino, but not Hispanic, and Spaniards would be Hispanic, but not Latino. So John McWhorter discusses that issue, as well as saying that for people who do speak Spanish, which is a Romance language, which has gendered nouns, Latinx might feel like an imposition by activists. And he also points out that even the term African-American has always been treated as a more formal term and that the younger generation nowadays are often referring to themselves as black and not African-American because it doesn't roll off the tongue as easily. It's not as casual. And so Latinx may solve a problem for some people, but most people don't find it a problem of concern or a pressing issue. So it's going to be hard to get it to catch on in the actual community. And when you do see where it has caught on, it is exactly in that academic space in the universities. And now it has spread to the other institutions like corporate culture or Hollywood. So people talking about Latinx actors, we're having a Latinx in tech seminar and so on. I have no idea if these corporations have asked the Latinos that work for them if they feel comfortable being described as Latinx or if they support the use of the term Latinx or if they think it's a form of linguistic imperialism. Imperialism. I don't know if they have that data. I'm sure they don't. I'm sure they just plowed along with it because their HR or diversity person told them that this is the hip term they're supposed to use now. From what I could tell, most people aren't super authoritarian about the term. They see Latinx as an alternative to Latino, but no one should be forced to use the term and no one should be forced to think of themselves as Latinx if they don't want to. And I'm totally fine if people want to describe themselves as Latinx. But like I said, the problem is that the term has become so mainstream now that people who are not Latino think that this is the term. They think that this is what they should call people. And I'm sitting over here like, if one of my lefty friends is out there referring to me as like their Latinx friend or they know someone in the Latinx community, I'll be like, like hell you do. I am not part of the Latinx community. I don't consider myself a part of the Latino community. Latina is a descriptor of my ethnicity, but I'm not part of any community. Don't worry, I will talk a little bit more about my personal identity and journey as a Latino in another video that will help contextualize some of my opinions on this topic. So to go back a little bit to the idea of the masculine as the default gender neutral term in Spanish, I saw one commenter on the Latino Rebels article who said that if you really want to make a pervasive change, you should normalize not gendering women in your speech because you use the masculine for everyone except when you are only talking about women, whether that is an individual woman or a group that is exclusively composed of women. So if you're talking about some hypothetical person of Latin American origins, who could be male or female, you would say Latino. If you're talking about a specific group of people that is composed of men and women, you say Latinos. It's only when you have a group of only women that you'll say Latinas, or you're talking about a woman you know and you'll refer to her as Latina. So this commenter said, stop doing that. Even when you're referring to individual women, say Latino. When you're referring to groups of only women, call them Latinos. Don't gender the term. So that's one way to go about it. There was another commenter who didn't support 
using the term Latinx, but did see the issues that people were talking about and said that in their personal life as an author, they alternate using the masculine or the feminine as the gender neutral term. And they know they're breaking the rules by doing that, but they don't care. That's what they want to do. So people have a lot of different opinions and approaches to this topic. Some people say there's too much focus on how Spanish speakers would pronounce this word because not all Latinos speak Spanish. So I already talked about the people who live in countries that don't speak Spanish primarily, like Brazil. But then there's also the large contingent of people who are of Latin American origins, but speak English as their first language for whatever reason. Contrary to popular belief, just because someone looks Latino doesn't mean that they actually speak Spanish, especially in current year because there's been years and years of immigration and migration by Latin Americans. And I'll talk more about the migrants versus the immigrants in another video. But obviously the first generation will speak Spanish. The second generation might still speak Spanish as their first language. They might not. They might speak it, but not fluently. Point being that there are a lot of Latinos that don't speak Spanish, so it doesn't matter to them. They can say Latinx, Latinx, whatever, which only kind of gives credence to people's argument that this is largely a term used in the US. And another point to make clear here is that Latino is largely a term used to describe people of Latin American origin living in the United States. People who live in Latin American countries, in my experience, might recognize themselves as Latino if they know what the term Latino means. They will recognize that they are of Latin American origin, but they don't think of themselves like that on a day-to-day -day basis. They think of themselves as Nicaraguan or Bolivian or Argentinian or Mexican. Yes, all those countries had conquistadors come there and enact imperialist policies and mix with the indigenous cultures, but all of those countries had very different experiences. They have different music and different food and different political climates, different geographic challenges. There is overlap, but thinking of them all as the same thing is like saying, oh, well, France and Spain are both Western Europeans. So, you know, they're basically the same. So a lot of people from Latin America will kind of come here and then see that people think of them as Latino when they're like, I'm Venezuelan, but okay. And they encounter the idea that there is the Latino community, that people that have totally different Latin American backgrounds feel some sense of community and solidarity with each other because of the shared struggle of immigration and integrating into the country, etc. When really Latino was a replacement for Hispanic as a way to identify all these people demographically and like a way for other people to put them all together into one box. People do it with Asian, even though Chinese people are not the same as Japanese people are not the same as Korean people, but Asian. Latin American is pretty much the same thing. With Asian, it's even worse because they don't even speak the same languages. And to be fair, just because people in different Latin American countries speak Spanish doesn't mean they even can totally understand each other all the time. Between the different accents, like how people in Venezuela will say j instead of y, so ellos becomes ellos. At least that was my experience with some Venezuelans that I encountered. And I met some Argentinians who would turn a wise sound into a sh sound. There are words that mean different things. Like in some places, the word pastel means sweet cake. And in other places, it means like a tamale, like a meat pie. There are all kinds of things like this. In some places, it's okay to refer to your family members with the familiar form of the word you. In some places, you can only do that with family members that are on your level, so to speak, to speak to your grandparents that way would be disrespectful. All kinds of things like that. But whatever I think of the Latino community, Latinx community, Latine community, whatever you want to call it. The concept does exist. A lot of people buy into it. A lot of people enjoy it. They embrace it. It's important to them. And so a lot of people say that the term was never meant to be a gateway into totally changing Spanish away from being a gendered language. It's just an alternative to referring to the Latino community. If you say the Latinx community, then you're inclusive of everyone and you're not putting preference on either gender. If you are a person who believes in the gender binary, you are acknowledging 
celebrating all the different gender expressions that exist within the community because we are so vast and diverse and beautiful, aren't we? Obviously, I don't live in a Latin American country. I'm not on the ground there. And so it is really difficult to tell to what degree people are using these terms there. But from what a lot of the commenters said on the Latino Rebels article, it seemed like the consensus was that people know about the term to some extent, but it's not used too much in day-to-day -day life. And it is more common on universities, even in those countries or among scholars. And it's not something people would use probably in casual conversation, but more like on a poster for an event or in an email describing something, but maybe not something you would just use in casual conversation as much. There was a woman who commented in 2018, three years after the article was written, that she only just came across the term in online articles. Like others, she thought it was a typo. And then when she Googled it, she found out that no, it was not a typo. And she's an American with Puerto Rican heritage that speaks Spanish almost natively and finds the term Latinx to be totally ridiculous. There are some people that say that they will use the term Latinx to refer to anyone who identifies that way to be respectful, kind of like using someone's pronouns, but they themselves use the term Latine to refer to people generally because it makes more sense to them. Someone pointed out that if you want to use a singular form of Latino in Spanish without associating with gender, you could just say, soy de Latino America. I am from Latin America or state the specific country that you're from, which like I said, is how most people identify themselves, not just from my anecdotal sense of things. There are statistics. I found a survey from a few years ago that said that even among the younger 16 to 25 contingent, at least 50% of them preferred to refer to themselves by their country of origin rather than Latino or Hispanic or any other term. In a HuffPo article I read, there was a college professor who said, quote, I want to live in a society where people care about how we speak about ourselves and each other. So for a lot of people, it's kind of like with the trans pronoun issue, it's a matter of respect and inclusivity. And then someone else who commented on the Latino Rebels article in 2020 said, quote, the whole thing about Latinx is that it shows the user is virtuous. They are telegraphing their support and love for transgender and non-binary people. And it's biggest with the chattering class. They just can't shut up about how virtuous they are. Who cares if only one in a hundred Latin people want to be called Latinx? What the 99% want doesn't matter. What matters is the show of virtue signaling. So I'm going to talk about some of the statistics about the current awareness of the term among the Latino community and the usage of the term in that community. In 2020, the Pew Research Center reported on a survey they had done in 2019, where they found that only 23% of US adults who self-identify as Hispanic or Latino have heard of the term Latinx, and only 3% said they use it to describe themselves. The sample in the survey was nationally representative and bilingual. The group most likely to have heard of the term was young Hispanics age 18 to 29. 42% of them said they had heard of it compared with 7% of those aged 65 or older. And Hispanics with college experience are more likely to be aware of Latinx than those without college experience. About 38% of Hispanic college graduates say they have heard of Latinx. 31% of those with some college experience say they've heard of it. But by comparison, only 14% of those with only a high school diploma or less are aware of the term. And that tracks with what I already said about the ubiquity of this term on college campuses. And I also read a research paper where they were investigating how people learned about the term Latinx. And most of them said that they had learned about it in a higher education setting, whether from their peers in college or in class. And some started to see it used on social media. So obviously if you're not either in a higher ed setting or using social media, then you're less likely to discover it. So the people with only a high school education or the people 65 and older who probably aren't really using social media are gonna be less likely to have heard of the term. There are a lot of interesting statistics in the research, but I just wanted to share a few of the interesting points. The survey also found that people born in the US were more likely than the foreign born to have heard of the term, 32% versus 16%, and Hispanics who are predominantly English speakers or bilingual are more likely than those who mainly speak Spanish to say that they have heard of the term, 29% for the English speakers or bilingual people versus 7% for those who mainly speak Spanish. Pretty big difference. Also, Hispanics who identify with or lean toward the Democratic Party are more likely to have heard of Latinx than those who identify with or lean toward the Republican Party, 29% versus 16%. They also made clear that just because someone is aware of the term does not necessarily translate into them using it. That across many of the demographic subgroups, the percentage of Hispanics who say they use Latinx to describe their own identity is significantly lower than the share who say they have heard of the term. The usage is highest among Hispanic women ages 18 to 29, 14% say they use it, which is considerably higher than the 1% of Hispanic men in the same age group who say they use it.
it. A majority of the people surveyed, 61%, say they prefer Hispanic to describe the Hispanic or Latino population in the US. 29% say they prefer Latino, and only 4% say they prefer Latinx to describe the Hispanic or Latino population. So this would be like when you're talking about census terms or the community. Most people still say they prefer the term the Hispanic community. Preference for Latinx as a pan-ethnic term, meaning a term that lumps people from a bunch of different ethnicities together, is higher among people who are aware of the term. Of people who are aware of the term, 10% say they prefer it. But even among those who are aware of the term Latinx, the terms Hispanic and Latino are still preferred at 50% and 31% respectively. So that's it for this video. I did my best to lay out the origins, definitions, purpose, arguments pro and against, and some of the nuances and context around the usage of this term. I don't use the term except as a joke, and I resent how mainstream it has become and that people who are not of Latin American origin increasingly think this is the correct term. But I'm gonna talk a little bit more about my personal thoughts about this in another video where I will also talk about my personal relationship to my Latina identity. So stay tuned. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe and I will have more content for you very soon.